Okay, first off, we're going to be converting this Atwood water heater over to propane and 110 using the hybrid heat hot water system. Drain plug's already been removed, so there's no water in it. Okay, I'll return in a few minutes as soon as I get some tools. Okay, this is the uh, Camco hybrid heat system to convert any straight propane water heater over to 110 volt also. Requires thermostat, of course, the heating, heating element, of miscellaneous wires to hook it all up, the power cord, and its own independent switch for the 110, and various adapters. Okay, now we're going to start some assembly. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, now we've got to put the thermostat, or the heating element, in the drain plug side of the water heater. That requires an adapter and this special piece here that threads on and locks in place. Cinches it up. And that all threads together. Then this will thread into here, into the drain plug location. Okay, let's get some plumber's tape. And put some plumber's tape on this, oop, on this connection. Uh, plumber's tape, it's commonly referred to as Teflon tape. Put a couple wraps on that, pull it tight. Then this will thread into here. This fitting here does not require any plumber's tape because it has a, let's see if I can get it to open up. It is a compression fitting and it locks itself and seals itself watertight. Okay, now we're going to put some Teflon tape on this big fitting here that actually threads into where the drain plug was on this Atwood water heater. Put a couple of good wraps on this. And pull it tight. Okay. Now I need to go get another crescent wrench. I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, now we've got to drill a hole for the these wires here to go into the switch assembly. There we go. Now we feed these in here. Oh, I gotta waddle that hole out just a little bit. Not quite big enough. There we go. That should do it. Yep, there we are. And we feed these in one at a time. Come on, get in there. There we go. And we've got a rubber grommet to protect that. But it doesn't come with a little slice in it to get it around. Oh, it does have, this one here does have a slice in the wire. So we feed that like that. Push these wires in some more. And snap this little rubber grommet in. Come on. Get in there. Come on. This keeps bugs and dirt and stuff from entering inside the RV. There we go. Now, that is done. Now we take all these wires that we've hooked together and the thermostat. Don't need this adapter, but we need these plates, these screws, zip ties, zip tie the wires out of the way. We're going to need the utility knife because we have to cut insulation to install the thermostat onto the water heater. Now, in this coach here, 
the water heater happens to be in underneath this back bunk. Yeah. And then what we're going to do, once we get this one set up, we're going to be removing this leg here, relocating it back here a little bit. We're going to be installing an additional water heater right here. So this RV will then have two water heaters. Now, I've got to figure out how this comes out. Okay. Looks like we have one screw right here holding that cover in. So let me go get some bits and I'll take that screw out. Okay. And you will find out that most RVs require what's called a Roberts bit. It's a square bit. I'm not sure the exact size, but of, I think there's like three or four different sizes. It's not the smallest one, and it's not the biggest one. It's like right in between. Now, we have to remove, excuse my jacket, remove this screw right here so we can take this cover off to install the thermostat. So, oh, wrong way. So, take that screw out, and take this out of the way, and there is the back of the water heater. Now, what we have to do is we have to cut this insulation back so we can mount this thermostat right in here. And as you can see, it has self-adhesive tape on the back of it. So, um, I forgot to bring in my razor knife. Let me go get the razor knife. Oh, I did bring in the razor knife. It's right here. Okay. Now, what we do is we find a good location for it, right about there, and we score the insulation so that way we can cut it out. insulation out because this water heater has to make contact or this thermostat has to make contact with the back of the water heater that's how it determines when to turn the element on and off just like your standard household water heater got that cut now let's pop that out pop that out make sure our thermostat's going to fit in here okay sticky stuff off the, the back here there we go and we get this in here nice and flush and flat and stick it in place there we go then we take two wires that we fed in before which are way in the back I'm gonna reach around and grab them Got them. Okay. Now we take where's our indent. White one goes to the white. Let's uh, hold on. Let me uh, take this little twist tie off here. Extend the cord out. Take this twist tie off, because that's where the switch is located for the 110 to turn the 110 side on. Okay. Now, do, 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 do. Okay, here we are. And we should have a white and a black to hook up to. There's the white. Where's the black one? Oh, here we are. This black one. Okay, you take. These two wires are way back here. Oh, get it over the gas line. 
and we hook the black into the black from the heating element goes to the black wire on the thermostat oh come on I'm going to get it to plug in. There we go. And we take the white wire and it plugs into the open white wire on the other side. Come on. Sometimes these can be a little bit tricky to get plugged in, but they will plug in. Locate the right direction to put it in at. Come on. And they are covered, so you don't have to worry about taping up anything. They're self insulating. Come on. There we go. There. That's all plugged in. Now, once we get everything done, run an outlet in and put an outlet back here to be able to plug this cord into the outlet then we will mount this switch in a strategic location easily where it's easily accessible and out of the way so now and then we have to ground it there is a green wire here that has to be grounded and you don't want to be grounding it to your water heater or anything like that it's a 110 ground so what we're going to do is when we bring in the 110 power outlet since that will be grounded we will extend this wire and ground it to the 110 circuit so that way it's grounded now we can take this cover take these black wires and this green wire let's bring them over the top of this cover that kind of hides the water heater a little bit we can bring it back but we're not going to screw that back in place just yet because we're going to have to take it out to take these water lines loose the two water lines the cold water inlet hot water outlet we're going to disconnect those because we're going to be doing some revamping here to install the additional water heater so let's put that screw back over there oh i did forget to mention and install what's called the thermostat cover this covers the thermostat because there is a reset switch here and you can also adjust this thermostat on a standard uh, RV water heater that has integrated uh, 110 uh, heating for the water you cannot adjust the thermostat on these particular models you can this one here is set for it looks like about midway so we're going to turn it up just a little bit. It's better to have nice hot water. Now we'll have to turn that up when I bring a flathead screwdriver in. Unless I can get it to turn up with this. No, I'm going to have to turn that up with a flathead screwdriver. The, the hotter your water is, most people don't realize, but the hotter your water is, the less your water heater has to work because you're going to be adding more cold water into the system. To cool it down that means your your water heater doesn't the, the 110 side will not have to work as hard because you won't be using as much hot water okay and then we're also going to be grafting into these wires back here that supply the power for the uh, propane side of the water heater these have what's called a direct spark ignition all you have to do it inside your uh, RV inside your coach up by your monitor panel or somewhere strategically located there's going to be a switch for your propane water heater you turn that switch on it lights itself heats the water up turns itself off when the water gets cold again it automatically turns on relights itself heats the water up turns off once that if that switch is on you never have to mess with your water heater in propane mode it'll turn itself on and off no pilot required so they're very energy efficient they don't use a whole lot of propane Okay, now I'm going to be back in just a minute while I go get some tools and some parts so we can start in doing the removing these hoses out of the way to be able to install the additional water heater. We're going to also have to graft into this propane line, which I forgot about.
So I'm going to have to go to the parts store and get some parts to do that. That has to be grafted in. Okay, I'll be back in a few. Okay, now what I have to do now, since we're adding an additional water heater, is in this space here, right in here, I have to add a, uh, put a hole in that's 16 and a half by 12 and a half inches. 16 and a half inches wide, 12 and a half inches tall, because this is an Atwood water heater. If it was a Suburban, the hole would be a little bit smaller. So, um, I will be right back as soon as I get my measurements done, and we'll do the cutting. Okay, we already have the hole on the inside cut out. Now we're going to cut out the outside. As you can see, I've marked it by drilling a hole in all four corners. I'm going to cut this out, and then there's a board that runs down here. We have to cut that out, and then put some wood bracing in around it to give us something to screw to. Yeah, okay, I'll be right back as soon as I get this cut out, and we'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, as you can see, we've got our hole cut, but I have to eliminate this, and then I've got to put bracing in down here, across this, down the sides, and across the top. So that way when we go to screw the water heater in, it doesn't collapse the skin in. We want to give something solid to screw into. So, now I'm going to frame this in. I'll be back as soon as I get the framing. Okay, there. As you see, we've got it wood framing in all the way around so that gives us something to screw to and it stiffens the wall up right here so now we'll get the water heater and see if we can tuck the water heater in in first so that way they're not getting in the way of anything see installed electric is hooked up I still got to hook up the propane put the door on and hook up the inside but it took a minute to get it in the door had to do some hole modifications but it's in okay now what we're gonna do both water heater and electrics hooked uh, one tan is hooked up on both of them this one here is the one that I just added in that one back there that's the original factory one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the cold water into this one and then come out of this one and go into the cold side of that one over there and then bring the hot side out to feed the system. That way they both heat water up. If you use all, your, all 12 gallons of water, they'll both heat water up. But as you're using water, you're pulling the hot water from the, from the factory one. And then this one here, as the water's being displaced out of the back one, this one here will refill it with hot water, so that one there won't work very, have to work very hard. This one here is going to be the one that do, does most of the work. Not all of it, but most of it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to sign off for a minute, and I'm going to get the cold water, uh, which the cold water side tied into both, you know, tied in, and it, it'll be blue pipe. There'll be blue pipe going into this one, and that's it. The rest of the piping will all be uh, red pipe for hot water. Okay, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, now, I've got the cold water system tied in. This, what I've done is, you know, cold water comes in. This is a part of the winter bypass system. Comes in here, um, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the red pipe for hot, take it over to the bottom one over there, and basically just straight line, no valve, and then I'll come out of that one there. It'll have a valve on it, and then it'll come out and go over here and tee off, and go in there and also come here that way when hot water flows through the system it goes you know as long as he's using the trailer the and this valve is turned off this valve here and that valve that i'm gonna put in up over there are turned on hot water will flow through in the winter time you close this valve close the valve over there open this valve drain the water out of these two 
and then he can put the RV antifreeze in the system, and the RV antifreeze will not go into these. They'll be empty. Don't need it. That's the winter bypass. Okay, now I'm going to run out, and then I'll bring it back on when I have the hot water side done. Okay, now as you can see, it's kind of dark. Let me get some light in there. Everything's all hooked up. We've got power, water. Right now they're running on both 110 and propane for the customer to allow them to heat up faster. But here's the switches for the uh, 110 side. Propane side, propane switch is up in the uh, kitchen area. That outlet right there may look like it's one regular outlet, but each one of those plugs is controlled by a separate breaker. So that way, if one of them decides to pop, you don't lose the heat off of both. You only lose the heat off of one. Regular thermostat that you would find in a household water heater, only it's 110 volts, so it is adjustable on these particular uh, conversion kits. On a regular RV water heater that does not have or that comes from the factory with the 110 built into it is not adjustable. You cannot adjust the uh, temperature settings on either the gas or the propane. Propane temperature on this cannot be adjusted. It's preset by the factories via the thermostat and the uh, emergency cutoff. But uh, split the propane line back there in the corner to feed both propane tanks or both water heaters. Water comes in into this first one right here, heats up, but it also heats up back there in the back one, and he's actually pulling from the back one, so as the hot water from the back one is delivered to the sink, the shower, whatever, it is replaced by the hot water from this front one, which in turn heats water up again. That way that back one back there doesn't have to work as hard. And that's basically tying in, uh, adding an additional water heater for those people that are going to be living in their RVs full time. Six gallons generally isn't enough for them, so they want more. So I install an additional water heater and if need be, put a conversion kit on them to uh, make them to where they'll run on electricity instead of using propane to heat the water up. Not hard to do, but not very, not real easy. And it takes a lot of time and you've got to know what you're doing. Okay. Thanks a lot for watching the video.